Well, howdy, y'all. So here's a handy redneck talking at you. It's March 21st. First full day of spring. As you can see, it's sunny out where I am. Uh, it's above 50 degrees. Uh, and I'm out in the raised bed gardens again doing some more planting. Uh, this time, we're going to plant uh, in two different gardens, two different things. I'll start by showing you first. Uh, first off, we got Golden Giant Amaranth from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds up in Mansfield, Missouri. And we got Cherry Vanilla Quinoa, uh, also from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. Now, the reason we, we're doing this today is where I've been starting my seedlings, something got in and it ate them all up. So all my seedlings are pretty much gone. So we're going to direct seed. Uh, thankfully, these things don't take that long to germinate and sprout, so uh, we should do all right. Um, I've already got in here and made some dibbles into in the dirt these are a bit deep for what we're going to be planting in them uh, and i'll show you why here in a second but we'll uh, fill these in just a little bit before we plant the seeds but i'm going to show you the biggest seeds uh, we're planting in this bed. That's these here, the the quinoa. Uh, if you look in my hand, that's how big they are. They, these are the big ones. So, um, quinoa and amaranth are both pretty good plants to have around to eat on for the simple fact that they're like so many other plants multifunctional um, and when I say multifunctional what I mean is uh, uh, you can eat, eat especially when it's a vegetable plant is uh, multifunctional to me means that you can eat more than just one part of the plant. So, in the case of uh, quinoa and amaranth, uh, what happens is we can eat the leaves and we can eat the seed. So, we've actually got, like so many other things, two crops. Two crops in the place of one, so. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna plant this here quinoa. Um, quinoa has a, a, what I consider a wild relative that is uh, pretty good eating. I don't know if it's actually a relative or not, but the leaves look so much alike between the quinoa and this wild plant I'm talking about is uh it, it's just ridiculous so I'm putting about three seeds in each of these but anyway the plant I'm talking about is wild but I think it kind of looks like uh, a relative of see the little stems or the seedlings but there ain't no leaves or nothing on them yeah, I mean they've been it's like a 
a miniature rabbit got in and munched my seedlings down. It, it, it's a little bit vexing, but hey, stuff happens, and thankfully, these things will grow quite nicely from seed. No problem. Now we'll, now we got them seated in here. I'll move you down to the other end, and we'll do the same for the golden giant amaranth. Now in this bed, uh, there's other things planted in here. We got, uh, oh, what, we got Brussels sprouts in here. That end we got a uh, couple of Brussels sprouts and uh, kale. So, you know, it, it, it's a literally a mixed bag of stuff we, we're growing. Um, we got carrot seeds planted in here a while back and uh, some turnips planted in here <laughs> and uh, we've actually got turnip sprouts uh, starting which I'll show you here in a minute after we get this here uh, amaranth planted and uh, again this is a uh, golden giant amaranth from Baker Creek up in Mansfield Missouri um, here's what the seeds look like. They're half the size of the quinoa we just planted. But, um, one of these little seeds has the potential to pr produce 10,000 more. Because of the way these things flower and head off and everything. Um, Amaranth and quinoa are, although not officially grains, they're more of a semi-grain. They're grown in other parts of the world as a staple food. So, again, each of these here pre-made dibbles, we're going to put like two to three seeds in. Or we're going to attempt to do it might end up with like four or five because they're so small. But that's all right because once they come up, uh, like so many other things, we overplant them, but that's okay because the, the, the young plants, tender shoots are edible. So we come in here and we uh, thin out the the weakest, smallest plants and keep the strongest, healthiest ones. And the ones we thin out, we just eat up. All right. So we got the golden giant amaranth planted in here. At this end, at the other end, we got uh, cherry vanilla quinoa. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure that's a, a cousin to uh, uh, what you call it, lamb's quarter, which is a wild edible. You know, looking at the leaves and everything, I'm pretty sure it's a cousin to amaranth. Or a cousin to lamb's quarter. But anyway, let's get in here, into the middle here, if I can. We'll try to get, get in up close, and you can see we got baby turnips starting to sprout. So, 
we got about uh, a four foot area two foot wide and two foot deep that we planted uh, turnips in because I like turnips and I like turnips for the actual root not the green so uh, but again you can eat the greens you can eat the roots carrots you can eat the greens you can eat the roots we move over here to another bed <laughs> and I'll show you what we're going to be planting over here so I'll set you up so you can see now in this bed right now we got planted uh, beets here don't get tinted because I've been just been too lazy to get the plastic out and tint it I got plastic for it it's just I'm like why bother and uh, the main reason I said why bother is that there's no transplant seedlings going into this bed um, or there weren't going to be for any significant amount of time. But uh, we're going to do three feet approximately, and two feet by one foot. We're going to do an amaranth and a buckwheat. Now, I'll show you here in a second what we're going to be planting. Uh, a lot of people are curious as to why I chose buckwheat. Well, um, it, it, it's sort of a grain, but it ain't. Uh, but it is a, uh, well, we'll get to it. Anyway, the amaranth we're going to be planting in here is a Chinese multicolor spinach. This one's primarily grown for the leaves, but again, if it does bolt and go to seed, uh, we can eat the seed out of it. And then we're going to plant some uh, tacan, uh, or tacane ruby buckwheat. And uh, the main reason I'm going to plant the buckwheat is it's a quick crop. Uh, it's a quick crop. It, it, in some cases, buckwheat, from the time, from seed to seed, can be as little as a month. Can be, but normally we're looking at like a two-month, um, two-month, uh, uh, lifespan for buckwheat but this here buckwheat here it's got these pretty red flowers that I'm hoping the bees like and it'll help to bring in pollinators and that's another reason I'm planting it uh, this early is uh, we want to try to bring in them their pollinators um, We'll see. We ain't gonna hold our breath. But hopefully, because it is a quick turnaround uh, plant that flowers. Hang on a second, y'all. Oi! Get up here! Shovel! Get out that road! But anyway, back to the buckwheat. Um, It'll hopefully bring in uh, the pollinators, like I see. 
uh, and give them give the uh, honey bees and other bees that uh, like flowers uh, something to snack on early in the season you know because if you ain't paid attention bees has been having it rough so anything we can do to help them we're going to try to help them so these Chinese multicolored uh, amaranth you thought the last seeds are small you just wait you just wait have a look at these looks like little flecks of black pepper in there <laughs> but like I said they, they're good eating something I ate them up inside so again we're shooting for three or four seeds per spot but when as small as these are we might end up with ten but whatever been it done had them up inside where they we started the seedlings I hopefully won't find these for a while I ain't gonna hold my breath but anytime something gets head up like that you know it's got to be pretty good eating and this particular amaranth um, the way I say it is primarily grown for the, the um, vegetation of the leaves and that, that's actually why I'm growing it is you know I thought it'd be an interesting uh, salad green or cooked green to change things up Alright, so that takes care of the Chinese multicolored spinach amaranth. Um, I'll cover them over here in a minute after we get the buckwheat planted. The bu buckwheat's a little bit different. It's uh, the biggest seeds we're going to plant today. And uh, when I say they're big, Compared to the ones we just seen, these are really big. And we're going to do uh, probably about two or three per hole. Just to make sure. These are funny looking seeds. They're triangle, triangular, you know. They got three sides on them. So. But again main reason I'm planting this here buckwheat is uh, as a, a pollinator attractant and we'll hopefully get some uh, good bees in here and, you know I like watching the bumblers uh, you know, but uh, we, we try to get some pollinators in here with the, this uh, buckwheat. You know, if we can get them in here, then we can hopefully keep them around and help them out some. But uh, again, this buckwheat, um, it, it goes fast. It's, it's primarily used as a grain. Um, it, like I say, it can go as fast as uh, a month from seed to seed. But generally speaking, we're looking at about two months growing time, go seed to seed. Uh, a lot of times buckwheat is planted as a, um, well 
as greens for uh, animal feed. You know, you, you plant it, let it grow, and then you let the cows wander into that field and eat it up. But uh, the seeds of it, which is the second part I'm actually growing it, uh, is considered an ancient grain. And once again, um, just because it's called green don't mean it's actual green. It's just called green. So, uh, with it being called a green, you know, it, you can assume, and you'd be right, that it's used quite a bit like grains. You know, you can grind it up and make flour and grind it up, uh, make beer, or it, pretty much anything you can do with a grain, you can do with uh, buckwheat and amaranth and quinoa, and it'd be just fine. So uh, I'm going to run over here right quick, leave you for a minute, and get the water, get these watered in. somewhere all right we'll get these watered in Okay, there we go. We get these watered in right quick, and then we'll water the beets. And we'll step down to the other bed here right quick, water the corn that we planted the other day. But I'll cut it, cut you off here once we get these watered in a bit. And they don't take a whole lot. You just want to get it wet so they can start germinating. And uh, that's about it. 
Uh, I'll talk at you all later. It's a handy redneck. Bye.